is Michael, and this is my partner. Hi, everyone. My name is Yuenchi. And we're going to be presenting our research paper, uh, Graph Based Ensemble. All right. So we're going to be talking about first is the future of data science. And we kind of want to address these questions where, where are we currently? And data science is a well-known term, and there's been a lot of techniques that we learned in class. And we learned skills such as clustering, nearest neighbor, and SMB. And while these techniques have been shown to get the job done, we want to ask ourselves, how can we do better? And there has been new research that come into play, and one of the most fascinating and cool techniques that we learn in class is Ensemble. And bagging and boosting are just some of the examples that addresses the drawback of single models. And so the next thing we want to do is, are there new ways to improve? So we don't want to reinvent the wheel, but we want to find a unique way that to solve ensemble models that we didn't address in class. And so we propose the graph-based ensemble. And the question is, but wait, how do we do that? And lucky for us, this field has had some research done in the past. For this research, we're going to examine past work that has been in the, done in the past. We're going to be defining our problem as a bipartite graph. And by defining it as a bipartite graph, we can break the problem down. And we're going to implement our own algorithm inspired by the previous work. And so that brings us to our problem statement, which is going to be how to create an efficient algorithm based or how to create an efficient graph based ensemble to create or to classify data and our paper is going to be looking at a research paper called graph based consensus maximization among supervised and unsupervised models and the authors for this paper is Jing Zhou, Fang Wang, Wei Fan, and Yeo Zisan. So exactly what was their work and what did they do? Uh, they created a bipartite graph that solves an optimization problem. Their paper mainly focused on the smoothness of the graph, and the goal was to create an iterative propagation instead of using a majority vote. So our project setup uh, is going to start out with our approach, where we're going to use the we're going to propose an algorithm that takes advantage of a bipartite graph to do label propagation and combining supervised and unsupervised algorithms to build a probabilistic matrix to predict class labels. And this is where I'm going to let, or actually, I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to just mention a couple of the similarities just to give credits to the past work. So something that we uh, took from them is using the bipartite graph to solve the problem. And we're both going to be using our own type of propagation to break down the problem. And this is where I'm going to pass it to my partner to talk about the uh, actual implementation. So here is a visualization of our bipartite graph. We basically have two sides of nodes. The left side is the object of the data side. The right side is the classes and clustering groups. We first train our supervised classifiers and predict labels to the objects. Then we cluster the whole data side to several clusters. In this case, we have two clusters, cluster 0 and cluster 1. After that, we add edges like this from each object and assign labels or cluster on the right side. Then we have this beautiful bipartite graph up here. Next, we will start building our probability matrix. You see this equation, each entry xij represents the probability of this object i being assigned to label j, which is equal to the addition of the probability of this object to be assigned as label j plus the average probability of the group of this object belongs to to be assigned as label j. And here is the notation table for the notation we used and uh, here's a pseudocode we wrote from our algorithm and this is what the probability matrix look like 
here's the label one here's the label zero here's the label one and the row represent the objects we have and when we predict we will choose the larger one we will choose the one which we, we will choose the label with larger probability to be predicted as the label we predict uh, here are the libraries we use for experiments we use git learn for supervised and unsupervised models and we use the network x for building the peptide graphs here are the data set we use for our experiment first one is the IMVD data set text data set with binary labels and it was from Kaggle another data set we use for our test uh, experiment was the forest cover tab data set it was in an imbalanced data set with multi classes from 1 through 7 and with only 54 features and it was also from Kaggle and here are the results of the experiment the first figure showed us we didn't beat all the baseline algorithm in the binary classification which is the MBD dataset classification. For this one, we use accuracy as our measurement because it's balanced. And also, we use the first and the second half split. Just split first half as train set and second half as test set. And fortunately, when we try to use a more discrete way, which is randomly split the dataset, it was dropped down to 0.5. That indicates our algorithm was pretty unstable in binary classification and it was highly dependent on the data site and surprisingly our algorithm perform outperform all of the algorithms in the multi-classes data site and in this data set because it's imbalanced we use the measurement we use was f1 score from skidler and we think that uh, it worked very well because the distinction became clear when we had more classes and we will talk about the reflection of our project first the probability tool is very handy easy to expand and could have more robustness by assigning weights on each clustering or classification algorithm based on robustness of them in one specific task we haven't done the weight stuff yet but we leave it open for others Secondly, this method relies on having some of the data labels labeled in order to adjust the learning models. It could handle missing label problem as long as it is fine on some labeled samples. Lastly, using the graph-based approach allows a lot us easy propagation inside the clusters. Next, let me talk about the insights of our project. Although we failed in binary classification but we win in multi class classification that indicates our algorithm is potential to be very robust in multi class classification when when the distinction among multi class became clearer and also it has the potential to grow because we haven't done the weighting to the ages because it has I think it has the potential to grow when we add the weighting for the ages and make it converge at some point to make it stable eventually uh, this is a good starting point towards using probability matrix all right and this brings us up to our conclusion of the project and how we did so we want to start out that we were able to address the issue of creating more robust ensemble method for predicting and the way that we were able to do this was to successfully integrate our probabilistic matrix into our algorithm. And by using this, we were able to pick out the best results. Uh, but however, just as we saw with the examples um, before, we, were, we failed to beat the uh, binary classification. But we did do well with the multi-label. And that doesn't mean that we don't have room for improvements and we have learned a lot from this project and we have already thought of some new ways to improve what we have, such as adding weight to the edges and creating some sort of way to stabilize. Um, then that brings us to our citations and these are the works that we looked at. And we're really glad that you got the chance to hear our research and watch our video. Yeah, thank you for watching.